Hi, I'm Norman Perillo, a uh, furniture designer, maker, and woodworking educator. And today I'd like to talk about uh, the mitered corner lap, also known as a mitered half lap joint. And what distinguishes this joint from a conventional miter joint is that the front facing part is a miter joint, but the rear part is a half lap joint. So it's a little confusing when you first uh, view it and try to understand how it's put together, but it's uh, it's a step up from a conventional miter joint and it's, it's, a, it's a reinforced miter joint is what it is. This is an example I've uh, created quite a number of years ago for educational purposes. It's a smaller one and these are more recent ones. So I've experimented with developing a process and a sequence on how to, how to create this joint using uh, exclusively hand tools. So I've succeeded in, in, uh, in using hand tools and I've also introduced a high level of accuracy in the joint. So there's relatively no tuning to perform afterwards aside from a little, a little bit of cleaning up with a, the, with a chisel. Uh, the, uh, the accuracy attained is similar to a conventional table saw joint, for example, or a bandsaw joint. And this is an example here. This is the miter and this is the half lap component. This is another example. And these are uh, examples that are not glued together. So this is what the joint consists of, two components. It's a little confusing when you first view it, but after a while it all makes sense. So it's just essentially a half lab joint with two mitered components. And this is a more uh, recent with a, with a hardwood. So I've actually had to label them. And, uh, and this is, uh, again, some more examples. And this is the most, very most recent one that, I've, that I'm going to be completing in this, uh, in this upcoming video. The gear I use, or the, the, the tools I use to create this using, uh, using hand tools exclusively are the, uh, the miter jack. You don't necessarily have to use a miter jack, but I use a miter jack to uh, create the, rev, the uh, similar reference surfaces. And I'll, I'll describe that, elaborate further on that in the actual the upcoming video on how to create this step-by-step -step detailed video on how to create the, uh, the mitered half lap joint. Along with that, I, I use these, these shop-made uh, miter jack saws. This is a, uh, a rip configuration on one side. I'm left-handed, so it's oriented for left-handed use. It could be switched. And this is set up for cross-cut uh, orientation. Again, left-handed. So these work in conjunction with, with, the, uh, with the miter jack that's actually attached to either a face vise or an end vise. In this case, in the example, and the next upcoming video is the uh, face vise. I also use a, uh, I use a Japanese Ryoba saw to lengthen the cuts. I'll elaborate further on that in the actual video. I'll describe it further and how I use it. So I've actually uh, quite, quite impressed with this, uh, with this type of, but it's a pull saw because of its thin kerf. And this allows me to attain a great degree of accuracy in the joint without any uh, tuning with uh, either a shoulder plane or a rabbit plane afterwards. And I also use this uh, Japanese square. It has both a 45 and a 90 degree edge. So it's uh, quite versatile. And again, the chisel. And aside from that, very little. And then uh, I'll just show you how, how you can attain a high degree of accuracy using strictly hand tools and maybe improvise your own sequence. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moderately complex joint as opposed to uh, a conventional simple miter joint or a half lap joint. So it introduces both, uh, both elements of a, a miter joint and the half lap component. So I'll just get on with the, uh, with the actual creation of it. So stay tuned. Wood skills, and I like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and 
a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. We'll be creating this uh, mitered corner lap. This is something I've made up uh, several years ago for educational purposes and this uh, describes the joint. So it's essentially a miter joint along here as I've uh, mentioned earlier for the uh, the front facing part and then it's uh, for structural integrity for strength it's actually a half lap at the back so you get the, both, the best of both worlds a, a nice uh, decorative miter joint that blends the grain in both directions and the uh, half lap joint at the back these are uh, some examples I've created, several examples as I was uh, going through a process of, of uh, developing a, a sequence to, uh, to speed the process up of, uh, of developing the uh, miter cornered lap. <laughs> it's essentially a half lap with a miter. And this, uh, so I had to label these, these components and this is the, uh, that's one example. So this is an example of the front and this is an example of the back. So that's the half lap portion, and that's the uh, mitered portion. Now, just to save on some wood, I've actually used the other, the the, uh, the alternate side of the wood. So this is the uh, another version of it. You notice the uh, the advantage of this joint is you can actually have a grain wrapping around from from a rail to a style, and uh, so it blends in really well. But at the back, it's just a uh, functional. Uh, half lap joint. So we'll be creating this today and I'll put this away for now and I'll bring in some other components. So these are uh, a couple of uh, smaller one by three pieces or three quarter inch thick. I've cut them all the length and I'll be uh, establishing the uh, Laying out the marks for the uh, for the half lap and for the miter. Sorry, I transfer the uh, the width of the board from one component to the other, just keeping the ends flush, and then using a knife to mark out the uh... now. Once I've done that, for example, for this component. I actually enhanced, I enhanced the, uh, mark the uh, scribed line. I enhanced the scribed line. So that would equate to the, uh, the width of the, uh, the opposing component. And then I, I simply transfer the, uh, the marks all around so I can erase these afterwards. And then I, uh, <coughs> I perform the same step here. That's the first step. Now we uh, we need to start creating the joinery, and I'll get into that. So to understand this better, this part is the uh, this is the mitered side, and this is the uh, the half lap side. And so it's essentially a half lap joint with a mitered component. And this on this uh, one side, the face side. So what I'll do is to to for clarity, I'll actually create one component at a time. So assuming this is the uh, the component we're working with. 
for this side, I'll mark off the, uh, we need to mark off the, uh, the center of the thickness of the board. So I'll just run this uh, marking gauge along. So this is a component, this is the, uh, I'm trying to replicate this, this first component. So I only need to mark off the uh, one edge and the top. Then for clarity, I'll, uh, I'll pencil it in. So that's the absolute center. So this uh, delineates the, uh, the half lap components. And the next step would be to, for using this as a basis, is to mark off the 45 degree component. So this is a uh, sort of a, a Japanese square I like to use because it has both 90 degree and 45 degree uh, sides. So uh, what I like to do often is uh, mark off the waist side so that I don't make a mistake. So I'll mark that off. So this is the, uh, the side we're going to be removing and only the, the half, half the thickness. So I'll mark this off too. And mark this off. When you, when you get into a complex joinery or this is on the, this is borderline complex joinery. You really need to mark these things off, even if you've done it multiple times, to avoid making a mistake. It's easy to conf get confused. So that's that. So I've marked that off, and now we can work on the second component. So I'll put that aside. And the second component is this component. So this is a little different. This is actually uh, if we remove the full half lap and then miter the uh, the remainder. And so I'll use this piece for this. And uh, again, because because we're working, we're removing the full portion of the half lap, I can delineate or mark off the complete, the complete both edges and the top board. So I've already uh, I've already centered the marking gauge because I'm using standard three-quarter inch stock. So I can actually use either face as a reference. So it's just a matter of dialing in the marking gauge. So the thickness is uh, equal on both sides of each half lap. Or, or essentially you're centered down the, uh, the thickness of the board. Just, uh, I'll do the same thing now. I'll just enhance the. Uh... That's that. Now, once I've done this, so essentially we're trying to replicate this component now. So the first thing is to uh, mark off that 45 degree angle. And this is the part that needs to be removed. So this is the part that's removed on this face, but the opposing face is the complete half clap. So I'll just mark it all off just, to, just for clarity. When you're doing this, you can always uh, select the, uh, the, the nicer portion of the uh, of the components to join together just for I'll put this way so these so this is how the joints will meet these two portions are removed this half lap portion is removed and this slides into this because this this, this part's gone now one thing I'd like to uh, mention is that um, 
We have to allow for the curve. I'm going to be using a, a Japanese uh, Ryoba blade for the most part in my miter jack saw to guarantee a, uh, a straight cut. You know, I'll, I'll show that process. So we have to allow for the kerf, and the kerf will take away maybe a, a sixteenth of this. So we have to allow for that. So what I've done is I've offset everything into the waste space. So we need to cut into the waste space. And then once we join the two components, it, it becomes a, they're each three eighths and three eighths inch thick and that converts to uh, the full three quarter inch. So it, we don't have any offset in the joint and I'll, uh, I'll be showing that next. So again, these are the two components that need to be uh, sawn offset from the, uh, from the center point of the thickness. So I marked that off here just for, uh, for clarity. And this is uh, the side, the waist side in, in, in the case of each individual component. So what, I, what I'm going to be using is a, uh, you've probably seen this in my earlier videos on the miter jack. I'm going to be using a couple of miter jack saws. These are uh, specifically created to use your workbench surface as a uh, as a reference, this is a, uh, a rip, rip tooth configuration. And I keep the blades covered because they're fairly dangerous if you just grab the saw. And this is a cross cut saw. And they both have, the spaces are uh, identical in thickness, so the reference is the same. And it's using the table, the workbench surface as a reference. And I use hold fasts to keep the components down. And I also uh, developed a, uh, uh, a spacer for three quarter inch stock and what this does is it not only uh, centers the wood but it offsets it's just the thickness of uh, half a kerf so two half curves equate to one kerf and then when I bring the components together it's uh, it's a full three quarter inch and I'll uh, so this is a spacer so this is a matter of setting it up with a little trial and error so I'll set that up now so I'm going to be sawing down the center of this full, the full length of the, uh, the half lap. My whole fast hammer, <laughs> it works. It's got the mass. So, um, so I, I begin with the, uh, I actually begin, it's a rip cut, but I begin with a cross cut blade just to uh, delineate or to, uh, to establish the cut. And then I move to a, uh, a full rip blade on the other uh, miter jack saw to continue with it. I only go down partially or as far as I can go and then use a Ryoba later, another Japanese saw to, uh, to extend the cut its full length and I'll, I'll demonstrate that. I just want to make sure everything's in view here. So I'll move this over, move the guard and start cutting. Like, just confirm that it's just below the, uh, the curve, the, uh, the center line that I've established. So I begin in one corner and slowly extend it and then work the other corner. I sometimes use uh, coat the surfaces of the blades with with uh, tool wax for uh, lubrication blade. So I'll put this aside for now. This is the uh, just to establish the cut, the cross cut version, and then I, uh, I continue with the. Uh, Notice it slips right into the kerf. And I continue with the rip. So if you notice I'm left handed, so my, uh, both of these miter jack saws are oriented for left hand use, but it's very easy to convert it to right hand. I just undo the bolts and uh, flip the, uh, the blade around and then this protrudes on the right hand side, on the left hand side for right hand use. I described all this in a couple of earlier videos on, the, on how to use a miter jack with a miter jack saw. The, the, 
premise is to go as far down as possible with this saw because this creates a reference and it creates an absolute straight cut, a rip cut down the, uh, the offset portion of the, uh, the center of the, uh, the half lap and then continue with the Rayova. So I think that's as far as I can go. So I'll put this aside. So what I have is an absolute straight cut uh, just offset from the center. You can see <clears throat> down the waist side and then I continue this with a Rayoba ensuring so this actually ensures that the cut's going to be straight for the full length of the uh, half lap and then uh, once we've done all that for both components then I can cut this 45 degree part off. So, so continuing on I've got the other component here that hasn't been sawn yet this is a center line I need to offset it this is the waist side uh, I'm going to be using against the workbench surface and the spacer and in this case a little different I'm only going to be sawing 45 degrees from one edge to the end and then removing this component so that's so that's, that could be confusing and that's why I mark everything off with pencil lines so I'll be uh, I'll just fasten everything up with the hole fast full hole fasts are ideal for this they they're quick and they work really well I'll just orient the board so So again, I'll use the, uh, I'll start the cut with the, uh, the cross cut saw just to establish the cut. I don't need to go very deep, I just go as When you do this, you uh, you soon realize the advantages of uh, if it's a rip cut to use a rip saw. How quickly it cuts compared to this. So once that that cut is established, it's just below the center line, like half the half curve, for example. Then I I, I transfer to the uh, the rip saw. I'm going to go as far down as possible. Again, the premise is to go down as far as possible using these saws because they have a reference surface to cut straight and then I can continue with the conventional Japanese Ryoba saw. You want to understand more about these, uh, these two saws, both in a crosscut and rip configura configuration and how to orient them for left or right hand use and how to pivot them. Uh, they can be pivoted for, uh, for either side. So if you only have the one saw, you can use both sides, the cross cut and the rip side. Preference my earlier videos on a miter jack maybe a few weeks ago, and uh, I described them and break them down. So we're almost there. So I've got enough. I've established enough of a cut to continue with a with a Ryoba saw. I use a Ryoba saw but you could use a uh, kataba. You might be able to get away with a, a deep dozuki with a, with a rip uh, configuration, uh, but I, I prefer the Ryoba. So I'll first release this now. <clears throat> so that's the cut. Notice how straight it is, and it's just below the uh, center line. So that, uh, so I just continue this and I'll bring it over to another vise so I can do that. I'm over at a different workbench now and I've got the two components that I need to saw. One is a full length uh, half lap and the other is a partial. So I'll start with the, uh, with the partial, I mean with the full, uh, start with the full length. I'll just clamp it in a vise. So I need to go down to the, uh, the base using the uh, Rayoba. Now I notice I keep the blade guards on the Rayoba. They're fairly sharp teeth to avoid any uh, actually damaging the teeth or breaking a tooth off. I always use blade guards. So I'm using the, uh, the rip side of the uh, Rayoba and I'll just uh, transfer that, that, 
that uh, cut that I've just established using the miter jack saw down. And that's another reason I mark everything off so I know exactly uh, I'll continue this down. Sometimes is actually just rotate the piece. Actually, I do this fairly often. I rotate the piece just to ensure that my cut straight. so far. I slow down when I'm approaching the, uh, the base of the That's a straight cut. <clears throat> so I need to remove uh, on this component, I need to remove this portion and then also this uh, 45 degree portion. So there isn't much left of this component. So next, I'll perform the same operation on, uh, on this guy. Now this is uh, it's a smaller cut, it's only a 45 degree cut. I'm using here it's a hardwood but but you can see how, uh, how quickly a uh, rail will we'll cut through this thing. If necessary I can remove this blade guard if I need to go deeper but I think I'll be okay. And that's that. So that's that cut and it's just slightly offset again from the center so I need to remove this component and then it should just join together. So to do that the next step I think we're done with the Ryoba. Put this away and I'll explain what the next step is. So next I'm going to be, uh, this is the, uh, I spent a considerable amount of time creating a se correct sequence of this so everything works out. Next I'm going to be removing the 45 degree portions of the, uh, of the half lap and it just turns out that in this particular joint, the 45 degree portions I need to remove are on opposing sides. So you can see that. And this works well with, uh, with my next step and I'll show that. So I'm going to be using the uh, miter jack saw for this operation. I use the miter jack saw in conjunction with the, uh, the miter jack that I described in the earlier videos. And I set this up this way. And when I lock it in, I have a uh, dedicated spacer for this. So it uh, eliminates any racking because it's such a large, this is the actual keel that actually clamps into the uh, either face or an end vise. And you'll see, you'll, you'll see why I use this for the next step in the sequence. And this is to, uh, to ensure that both 45 degrees are in the same plane. So when they join together, it's uh, almost foolproof. And I also use a, uh, so I reference the top surface, I keep that flat. I use a uh, spacer that equates to the, uh, the depth or the spacer on the, uh, on the miter jack saw. And I should bring the saws over actually. 
Now in this case I'm only going to be using uh, one saw with the uh, crosscut uh, teeth out or crosscut configuration but again you could easily use the same saw for both if you need. So I'll set that up. So I lock this in here. Now this uh, miter jack excels at this operation so I set it, I'll be setting it up with a spacer block that equates to the spacer block on the uh, on the miter jack saw. And I set this up to uh, 45 degrees, keeping the tops flat. So I'll just do a preliminary tightening here. I think we're okay now. Confirm this setting is the same, that's good. So well, this again, this spacer is exactly the same thickness as the spacer here. So without using the saw to uh, to set this up, I can use the spacer, and I should make one more, two more of these actually. So everything's clamped down, and I'll just start that cut on both sides. Again, this creates a reference. Using the uh, the jaws at 45 degrees of the uh, of the miter jack as a reference. Well, that's part of the top. So everything is uh, square now. The cheek with the shoulder with the half flap. I'll put this down. Now I need to do the other cut and I'll just reorient the camera so you can see that a little better. So I'll be uh, performing the same cut here on this side and it should be in the same plane because they're both set up identically and so are the jaws. So I've established both 45 degrees cuts using the miter jack and miter jack saw combination. So basically essentially done with the miter jack for now and then I just need to establish a, uh, a 90 degree cut on one lap and that joint should go together. So this is, uh, this is where we are so far. So I just need to remove this portion and this should fit right in. Everything's a 45. So I'll cut this using uh, using the vise. Don't need to use this anymore. Although I can set this up for a 90 degree face. It's just too much trouble. So I'll just remove this and put this aside. I have this little spacer block here to support one end of it. I'll just move this over here. So I can remove this spacer block too. So uh, <clears throat> where we're at now is uh, this component's complete. This is one component. All the cuts are made. I mean, just the one cut actually. And this is uh, this is that this involves two cuts. This portion. So I need to remove this part of the uh, half lap. And this cut's already been established. So I'll be using the uh, the miter jack saw in a cross cut configuration orientation, I should say. So I'll be using this device. Spacer block to delineate the uh, reference line. Something else I'll do is I need to ensure I need to ensure this component is exactly 90 degrees, so so it's not to the workbench surface. So it's at 90 degrees to the workbench surface. So this ensures a uh, ensures a straight cut kind of set up with the spacer. So all I need to do is really just roll that, that little part that 
the half black using here. So I'll just um, Well, this ensures a, uh, a square shoulder with the cheek of the half lock. There. That's done. Put the guard on. I just like to get into this habit of uh, putting the guard back on right away. So that cut's done. And this cut's done. So the only thing really left to do now is just to clean the, uh, the inside corner using a chisel. Just make sure there are no protrusions and it's uh, very straightforward. And same with this. So it should come together it, uh, perfectly and it does. So uh, this is the mitered mitered side and notice everything's uh, flush also. I'll just reverse it and this is the 90 degree side again everything's flush so that's how simple it is. I mean once you're set up like this you probably do want to do multiples of these cuts because you're, uh, you've got such an investment in, all, in the setup in the sequence. That's that corner and I'll probably uh, remove all the pencil lines. So that's, that's a 45 degree final uh, scraping to do once you've assembled the joint. And it's just a matter of gluing it and everything's fine. So, and this is the... Uh, so this is a... Uh, a mitered half lap or a mitered uh, lap joint performed strictly with hand tools. And I've done quite a few of these as I've uh, shown earlier and in developing the, uh, the correct sequence of how to do it using the, uh, the miter jack and the miter jack saw as a reference. So please subscribe to my YouTube woodworking channel where I share more of my woodworking techniques, my, uh, my woodworking philosophy my thoughts on woodworking and uh, all the challenges I've experienced and uh, I introduce some of the uh, new forms of woodworking I've discovered and also visit uh, woodskills.com where I have a good selection of uh, my books both in print and digital format on woodworking and uh, all my online courses and uh, I offer also offer some woodworking plans. I have maintained a, uh, a regular blog on uh, what I've got going on in my workshop and uh, in woodworking in general. So enjoy!